faith is not just a matter of talk, but it's a matter of action, a matter of our life and living. We read, And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the Spirit he gave us. Here ends our second lesson. Our verse for today, Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. Alleluia. Our gospel lesson for today is recorded for us in the gospel according to St. John, chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. And these words will serve as a basis of our meditation on God's word today. I'm not going to reread the entire section at that time, so at this time I ask you to give your careful attention to the context of these words. Jesus is the one speaking. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Here ends our gospel lesson. We will now hear the first hymn of the day, like the golden sun ascending, Verses 2, 4, and 5 of hymn 147.
Dear friends in Christ, as I mentioned, we'll be looking at the words of John chapter 15. We as Lutheran Christians are fond of saying that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. We make a big deal about the fact that we are saved without the works of the law. In other words, we can't contribute anything to our salvation. We are saved only through faith in Jesus Christ. Paul practically stands on his head to make that point clear in both Galatians and Romans. It is our Lutheran mantra, and rightly so. But that Lutheran mantra is criticized by some, including some other Christians. They think that Christians of the Lutheran faith often say that we are saved by grace through faith, and therefore it doesn't make any difference how we live. They accuse us of saying that because we are saved through grace, that therefore we don't have to live a life that is pleasing to God. They picture Lutheran Christians as thinking we can just sin away because after all, we're, we're covered by grace. They caricature Lutheran Christians as being people who aren't separated from the world and its attitudes and its ways because, hey, we have grace. But that's not just a criticism from the outside. It's also a deception that our own sinful nature uses to deceive Lutheran Christians. Very subtly, that sinful heart of ours begins to think, well, it's not a big deal if we come to church to worship regularly. It's not a big deal if we bring offerings richly and freely to God. After all, we're saved by grace. We don't need to, to love our neighbor and help the homeless and the oppressed and the downtrodden. We don't need to do all those things because we're saved by grace, not by what we do. We're saved, our sinful nature likes to think, because God has given us his grace. It's not about what we do. It's not by our works. It's simply his grace. Friends, Jesus would beg to differ. It does make a difference how we live. It doesn't add one iota how we live to our salvation. That's by faith in Jesus Christ alone. But how we live shows that we are Jesus' disciples. It shows that we are indeed saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. And today, Jesus uses horticulture to teach us that very truth. Living branches bear fruit. Jesus uses a picture that would have been very familiar in his day, the picture of a vineyard. And as usual, there is a vine in the vineyard and there is a farmer who takes care of the vine so that eventually that vine produces lots and lots of grapes. And as Jesus tells us this picture, right up front, he tells us that he is the vine and his father in heaven is the farmer. But he also talks about branches and about fruit. So who are the branches and what's the fruit? Well, we don't have to guess because Jesus tells us. He says to his disciples, you are the branches. And the fruit is pretty easy to see in our text, as well as the rest of Scripture gives us that understanding, that the fruit is what Christians do in their lives. It's what results from our being Christians. But Jesus then makes a very startling statement in our text. He says that he, that is the father farmer, cuts off every branch in him, in me, that bears no fruit. What's startling about that statement is that Jesus says these are people who are connected to the vine. He says they are in me. How can that be that they don't produce any fruit then? Jesus said, if you remain in me and I remain in you, you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. There's something wrong with these branches, that they're not producing fruit. But the problem isn't that they're not producing fruit. It goes much deeper than that. 
The problem is that these branches are not connected to the vine anymore. Even though Jesus says they are connected in him in some way. Jesus is here talking about people that have been connected to Jesus by faith, but that have been disconnected. They have lost that faith. Outwardly, they may still be part of the visible church. They may still confess all the right things. They may still live a decent life. But inwardly, they are not believers anymore. They are disconnected from Jesus. And therefore, everything that they do is not fruit. Because Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. That is, without faith in Jesus, we can do nothing. We need to talk about that word nothing just a little bit. Does that mean that unbelievers in our world can't do anything that that is ever good? Does it mean that unbelievers don't have good jobs and benefit the world? Does it mean that unbelievers don't raise families and serve society? Does it mean that unbelievers can't do anything that the world thinks is ever good? They can do nothing? No, it doesn't mean that. But remember, Jesus is here talking about spiritual things. He's talking about the kingdom of God. In God's kingdom, whatever we do by our nature and as part of this world is really nothing before God. In God's eyes, anything that we do apart from that vine, apart from Jesus, is not acceptable to him. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing that pleases God even a little. Because apart from Jesus, we're nothing more than dead branches with no fruit. And what happens to dead branches? Jesus says they're cut off from the vine. Jesus gives a little bit more detail a little bit later when he says that they are thrown outside where they wither because they're not connected to the vine. And eventually then they're gathered up and they're burned in the fire. You see, dear friends, Jesus is here giving us a warning for our sinful nature so that we don't become lazy Christians and begin to think that our lives are of no consequence. If there is no fruit, there is no faith. And if there is no faith, then we are dead branches that are cut off and thrown into the eternal fire. Do you remember what Jesus once said? He said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Or do you remember what Jesus said to the Pharisees, those that people looked at in their lives as being good people, godly people? And Jesus said, these people draw near to me with their mouth, and they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They were dead branches. They didn't have faith in Jesus, and so what they did, all that they did was not acceptable to God. And so Jesus is here asking us to beware. Beware that we don't continue to think we're we're Christians and call ourselves Christians if there is no fruit, no spiritual fruit in evidence in our lives. On the other hand, Jesus is saying to us that if we are connected to Jesus, then everything that we do is a good fruit to God. It's all producing good fruit. You see, because branches can only produce good fruit when they're connected to the vine. And here we have to distinguish between being connected, remaining in the vine, and the fruit. First, you need to be connected to the vine, that branch, before it can produce any fruit. It's the same way in the garden, isn't it? The grapes don't come on their own. They have to come after there's a vine, and after that vine has branches, then you see fruit. You see the grapes. Grapes don't produce branches. Branches produce grapes. So it's not what we do that makes us part and connects us to the vine. It doesn't make the branches what we do. But when the vine has the branch and it's connected to that vine, then it produces lots 
and lots of fruit in our lives. And how is it that we remain in that vine? What does that mean to remain in the vine? Well, Jesus had earlier said that there were branches that were bearing fruit that needed to be pruned. The word prune means to clean. That's what it comes from. We're going to come back to that idea of pruning those branches in a little bit. But right now, I just want you to understand that meaning of the word prune has to do with cleaning, because then you'll understand what Jesus said when he said to his disciples, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. And a little bit later, Jesus says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you. You see, the key to remaining in Jesus is his word. We remain in Jesus when we believe in Jesus. We believe the word that he's spoken to us. That word cleans us. The church, the Christian church, is made up of branches. Branches that remain in Jesus and are connected to the vine because they believe Jesus' word. They trust in God's word and they are cleaned. They are forgiven members of that church and part of the vine. The vine, you see, was planted by the Father. It was planted when he sent Jesus into our world. It was planted when Jesus came to this world and lived a perfect life, bearing perfect fruit in his love and obedience to the Father, and the Father counts that fruit as ours. It was planted when Jesus died on the cross, and forgiveness was won for us so that the Father cleans all of those branches in that vine. It was planted when Jesus rose again from the dead and the Father declared that every one of those branches to be a perfect branch in connection with that vine. Do you see what an amazing thing it is that we're connected to that vine? That is, that we continue to believe in Jesus? Because when we're connected to that vine, then everything that we do is acceptable to the Father. It's good fruit. Now remember, Jesus isn't talking here about when we do wicked things and we sin against him. He's talking about everything that we do out of love for our Savior because we believe his word and trust in him. When we do what we do because of love for our Savior, then it is all good fruit before God. When we're connected to the vine, what we do is good fruit. Living branches produce fruit. And what is the fruit that we produce? It's the good works that we do in our life. Now, good works are not just certain kinds of things that some people have designated as these things are better than other things that you do in life. Good works are anything that we do out of love for Jesus. Good works is when you do your job well because you love your Savior Jesus. Good works is when you obey your parents because you love your Savior Jesus. Good works is when you make your bed because you love your Savior Jesus. When you cook because you love your Savior Jesus. When you clean and when you exercise because you love your Savior Jesus. That's all good works. And whatever we desire to do, whatever we want to do and pray to God that he helps us to do, those are good works because they're done because of our connection with the vine. And whatever there is that's still not so good in our works, Whatever there is of bad motives that are still left in our hearts, those are cleansed, they're cleaned by that vine in which we're connected, the perfect vine, Jesus. And in this way, God planted that vine to bring himself glory so that that vine through these branches might produce lots and lots of fruit, lots of good works to God's glory, not to ours. And now let's go back to that thing I mentioned before, that there are branches, Jesus said, that are bearing fruit, but the farmer still prunes them. Because even good bearing branches have to be pruned, they have to be cut, they have to be cleaned of the dead wood that might hinder them producing more fruit. And so Jesus is reminding us that even as we are believers in him and producing good fruits in our lives, that we still have that sinful nature in us. And so he needs to continue to prune us. He needs to cut that dead nature out and so that we might produce more and more fruit. 
Martin Luther wrote a precious commentary on that very thought. And I'd like to share that with you today, word for word, because quite honestly, it just can't be said any better. Here's what Martin Luther wrote. This requires the art of believing and being sure that whatever hurts and distresses us does not happen to hurt or harm us, but for our good and profit. We must compare this to the work of a vine dresser who hoes and cultivates his vine. If the vine were able to be aware of this, could talk, and saw the vine dresser coming along and chopping about its roots with his mattock or his hoe and cutting the wood from its branches with his clipper or his pruning hook, it would be prompted by what it saw and felt to say, Ah, what are you doing? Now I must wither and decay, for you are removing the soil from my roots and are belaboring my branches with those iron teeth. You are tearing and pinching me everywhere, and I will have to stand in the ground bare and seared. You are treating me more cruelly than one treats any tree or plant. But the vine dresser would reply, You are a fool. You do not understand. For even if I do cut a branch from you, it is a totally useless branch. It takes away your strength and your sap. Then the other branches which should bear fruit must suffer. Therefore, away with it. This is for your own good. You say, but I do not understand it, and I have a different feeling about it. The vine dresser declares, but I understand it well. I am doing this for your welfare, to keep the foreign and wild branches from sucking out the strength and the sap of the others. Now you will be able to yield more and better fruit and to produce good wine. And then Luther continues, That is how Christ interprets the suffering which he and his Christians are to endure on earth. This is to be a benefaction and a help rather than an affliction and harm. Its purpose is to enable them to bear all the better fruit and all the more in order that we may learn to impress this on ourselves as he impresses it on himself. This is indeed a fine and comforting picture. Happy is the Christian who can interpret it thus and apply it in hours of distress and trial. When death upsets him, when the devil assails and torments him, when the world reviles and defames him as an apostle of the devil, then he can say, See, I am being fertilized and cultivated as a branch on the vine. All right, dear hoe and clipper, go ahead, chop, prune, and remove the unnecessary leaves. I will gladly suffer it, for these are God's hoes and clippers. They are applied for my good and welfare. Unquote. It is and always has been our Lutheran mantra that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus alone. And Jesus even teaches that in this horticulture picture because the vine gives life to the branches. We have life through faith in Jesus Christ alone. But living branches produce fruit. And as God prunes those branches, as he leaves difficulties and trials and tribulations come into our life, we have to turn back to Jesus. And by turning back to Jesus even more and trusting in him even more, we produce even more fruit. Heavenly Father, prune us today that we may be such fruit-producing branches. Amen. We continue our service by confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found printed in your worship folder. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Having been blessed by our Lord to be connected to that wonderful vine so that we might produce fruit, we have opportunity now to produce that fruit in our offerings, first of all, and then now also in our prayers. Let us join in our prayer of the church. Following that, we'll speak together the words of the Lord's Prayer printed in your worship folder. Let us pray. Gracious Lord Jesus, you who are the vine, who came to this world in order that you might cause the church to grow, we praise and thank you that you have grafted us into that vine, that we have our life through you, and that by you, you also are able and empowered in our lives to bear fruit, fruit that will last to eternity, fruit that is the glory of our Father in heaven. We ask you to continue to help us to bear fruit in our lives, especially in this time of difficulty and trials in our world, that we may show love as you have loved us so graciously. And especially, O Lord, as we look back at this past week in our nation again and in our world, we see how lacking love is in so many different ways. We ask you to help us to be the light in this world that shows the love of our Savior, that we might grow in that love each and every day, and that our love may be shown to others so that they know we are your disciples, but also so that they are attracted to us, and that through us, they may know about their vine, who also brings life to them. We pray this, O Lord, in your holy name, and we ask you also to hear us as we pray the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the celebration of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms and placed all things under his feet for the benefit of the church. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. We now invite you to come forward as ushered so that you might receive this true body and blood of our Savior, the vine. As you come this morning, the elder will pass by with a tray that has some of the uh, individual little uh, wine and, and wafer cups, if you prefer to take that. Otherwise, I will come with the bread and the wine as usual in our communion practice. I would ask, however, that if you take that, the small one and you open it, the sides at, at the proper time, that you wait until I come before you to receive it as the others are taking it next to you. May the Lord bless us as we come to his table. <laughs>
Let us bow our heads in prayer. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips 
which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We listen now to our closing hymn, number 761, Christ is with me. Welcome again to our worship service today. So good to see you all here today. May God bless you throughout the week. A couple of announcements to call to your attention. Please read everything that's in the worship folder for yourself. But uh, note that a couple of things. One is council members, please note that we do have a meeting on Monday night. Please plan to attend that meeting. Secondly, don't forget our Wednesday evening Bible classes at 7 o'clock. We can still take a lot more people. It's a virtual meeting, but there's plenty of room on the screen for you. So join us and see what uh, you can learn from God's Word. It's been a long time for, for many of you to study God's Word besides just hearing the messages on Sunday. So good chance to dig into God's Word a little bit more and, and ask questions as well. So please join us for that Wednesday evening 7 o'clock Bible class. If you have trouble getting on, let me know and we can, we can get you set up for that. And finally, uh, please take note of the announcement in the bulletin regarding the Harbor City Food Pantry. Uh, we are taking an offering for a group that's uh, serving those who are in need in our community. And uh, this is a special opportunity for us because as we give our offerings, if we reach $2,500, up to $2,500 will be matched by our Synod's Committee on Relief. So it would literally double what we've been able to offer and help. And what we're doing is we're buying gift cards with that and handing them out. 
Um, we've had over $1,000 come in, so we've bought 80 cards already, and we will start giving those out in the very near future. Um, and they will go to the, the individuals with information also about their Savior, who is the bread of life. So as you have opportunity, um, you can give online. There's some envelopes on the back table that also you can use if you prefer that. May God bless you through the week. We continue to worship like this uh, until we find out differently next week. I'm told, at least in a meeting that I had online this week, that they might be going into the yellow tier. And if they do go into the yellow tier, we'll see what changes might come for us at that time. So God bless you in this difficult time.